Welcome back to the Marching to Madness College Basketball Podcast this afternoon, where I have the iconic coach, Phil Martelli, good friend of mine, uh, checking back in as he has been the associate head coach at Michigan since 2019. Uh, you know Coach Martelli well. I mean, he was a coach at St. Joe's for 34 seasons, won 444 games in 24 seasons as a head coach. Welcome back, Coach. I appreciate it. A little bit different setting than Philly, but uh, both Ann Arbor and Philly are very cold at this time of the year, but that's why I coach an indoor sport. The sport, in my opinion, you know that. Hey, talk about your overall um, details of performing as uh, the associate head coach there at Michigan in the Big Ten and beside Juwan Howard. Uh, well, it's been a great experience. Um, I, obviously, when uh, when things came to an end in Philadelphia, I knew I wasn't ready to kind of go off and just observe games. I wasn't ready to kind of do a media uh, job. I wanted to be in a locker room uh, at the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And uh, I wanted to go somewhere where, where it would have meaning. So when Jawan Howard became the head coach at Michigan, never having dealt with the NCAA, never having been a head coach, it's a perfect setting. And over these four years, uh, I've just learned so much. The offensive minds in the Big Ten are extraordinary. The level of basketball, the commitment on the campus, everybody on this campus, got up today with the idea of how do we help our team win the national championship? And uh, so the basketball has been great. The way I've been treated has been great. The responsibilities have been great. It's just not home. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm Philadelphia through and through. And my wife did not move out here. Uh, she still lives outside of Philadelphia. My daughter's within a mile of her with four of my grandkids kids oh, wow. two of my sons are coaching one with three daughters uh he is an assistant coach at vcu and my other son is the associate head coach at bryant and all that's left now is for all three teams to make the ncaa tournament and um hopefully that can happen uh, we've had two uh but we haven't had all three of us make the ncaa tournament yet Sure. Now, I'll tell you a solid statistic that will go a long way in Michigan making it to the NCAA tournament. You guys only average 9.4 turnovers per game. How does that happen in an era when forcing the turnover and the run jump and all those types of presses and things are uh, obvious, uh, you know, who is watching the game? Well, one of the things that uh, that we do is we have a very, very, very thick playbook. And I think that teams cannot load up on all of the things that we try to accomplish. We also play through the low post. Mm -hmm. uh, probably our best passer is Hunter Dickinson. He's our, he's our center, or seven foot two center. Uh, and we really do play with the idea of let's hit a lot of singles. Let's not swing, swing for the fences. There is a downside, though, and actually it's come out over our last couple of meetings in that our pace is a little bit too slow. Mm -hmm. We have to play at a little bit faster pace so that we get more free looks. We get more free runs to the basket. We get more threes in transition. Uh, but it is a point of emphasis. And I'm not going to say as much as our dear friend John Cheney when he ran the Temple Owls and you know, you, you, you were going to, you were going to go weeks without them committing nine total turnovers or 10 total turnovers for that week. Um, we, we have really set a goal to be under 10 and uh, one is our extensive playbook and two is our pace of play, which has to quicken here in the big 10 season. Sure. Now Hunter Dickinson, you mentioned there, he's rated, in the top 500 players on KenPom.com. And that's quite a, a story, you know, because it rates players according to analytics, advanced analytics. 
uh, his highest ratings uh, were his percentage of shots that he takes uh, and his blocked shot percentage on defense. Well, he, he's, first of all, our offense is geared in, in today's world, even our offense is geared differently in that we want a low post touch. Mm -hmm. Hunter is very skilled. He also has the benefit of being left-handed. So not a lot of big guys are used to guarding left-handed players. Uh, and he has been in the laboratory. So when, when we do player development, the front court deals with Juwan Howard. 19 years in the NBA, obviously two final four, uh, one final four with the Fab Five. Yeah. Uh, so he is a tactician. Hunter has taken to that. Now his block shots, he's not a rim protector. But he does have great length. And since his freshman year, he has really concentrated on not being in foul trouble. We cannot afford for him to be in foul trouble. Uh, and he is an unusual shot blocker in that he blocks his own man shot. It's not like he's a great help defender. He's coming off and uh, protecting the rim. But he can stand his ground, long arms, good timing, and he's not fouling. That's the biggest deal about his block shots. Jalen Llewellyn, I really hated to see him tear up the ACL and not be able to finish because you can watch him and tell he loves to play the game. Well, his father was a good player at Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he took a chance. This is a young man that turned down scholarships to go to Princeton. He understood that this was a a long-term uh, decision. So he is a Princeton grad. He played mm -hmm. in the Ivy League, played in that remarkable system that Mitch Henderson and many of people are, are running not as efficiently as, as Princeton. And he's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful young guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he has stayed upbeat. He has not had his surgery yet. They're waking, making sure that, that he has full functionality in his mm -hmm. knee. And hopefully he can be playing basketball again next year. But I'm with you. I, my biggest wish, my biggest wish for every player out there is not that they experience championships or not that they experience March Madness, which we so dearly love. But I just want that every kid out there gets to play his 120 games, his 135 games, whatever that number is, that they can play injury free. And when I, when I greet coaches – before games, and I have my whole career, I have always said the same thing. Let's hope that everybody, let's, ha let, let's hope that both teams play injury free. Um, it does, it hurts your heart when a young guy gets hurt like that. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and Jed Howard is the second leading scorer behind Hunter Dickinson. Averages 15.6 points per game while leading you guys as your top three point shooter. 29 of his 72 uh shots okay have gone in and it, he nets 40.3 percent in that mode now he he is he's a shooter now mm -hmm. you know the, uh, and and you and i have both seen enough players that they'll say well he's a shooter yeah i like makers mm -hmm. <laughs> jed howard is a maker mm -hmm. uh and one of the things that's going to come out now and 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 you know the big 10 is going to scout us thoroughly they're going to crowd him. What people are going to see is that he is a magnificent passer. He's a magnificent passer in pick and roll. He didn't have a lot of that at IMG uh, because of the, of the town around him. We are working him every day uh, to, to make sure that he is efficient uh, in the pick and roll. Uh, his stroke is really, really pure. And what I like is, you cannot tell by body language whether his last shot went in or it missed. He's mm -hmm. going to step up and take the next shot. Quick release. The, the line is not an issue in terms of range. And uh, I, I hope that at the end of the year, we're in discussion as who's the best freshman in America. And I hope that Jed Howard is in that conversation. Two other players, Kobe Bufkin, Terrence Williams, the second, their third and fourth uh, leading scorers right now as they both look for the three, but Bufkin shoots 47.5% overall from the floor. A lefty, 
mm-hmm. smooth around the floor. Here's what I like the most about Kobe Bufkin. He, he was an in-state kid, mm-hmm. McDonald's All-American, didn't play much as a freshman. And you and I both know how that can go, where people can, can start to get in your ear and complain and transfer. Everybody's transferring now and with the ability to play right away. He stayed, he studied, and here's the deal. In the morning, if tomorrow's practice is at 11, at 7 a.m., he'll be in there shooting. Mm-hmm. He'll practice at 11 o'clock. He'll come back at 5 or 6 o'clock at night. Three times a day, he's getting a lot of work. Uh, he's playing now a backup point guard. You mentioned earlier, Llewellyn's injury has moved mm-hmm. Kobe Bufkin to a backup point guard. And the guy that he chose to emulate was Eli Brooks. Eli Brooks was the best defender in the Big Ten last year, and Kobe is raising to that level, put in a lot of time with his body. But more importantly for all the young players out there, he put in time on his game. Mm -hmm. A lot of these guys end up, you know, becoming uh, great weight room guys. You have to work on your game. Kobe Bufkin is a skilled player who, in my opinion, will get a chance to play at the next level. There's only four players that have played 50 plus games uh, on your roster. So as you came in, you know, like lots of young kids, how did you prepare a team, you know, going into the season that hadn't had that much experience? Well, I I give a lot of credit to Juwan Howard and our administration. Mm -hmm. They recognized that this would be a younger group. Now Mm -hmm. it's younger than we anticipated because, Musa Diabate and Caleb Houston went to the NBA after one year. Uh, we thought that maybe one of them would come back, hoping both of them would come back and build on their experiences from having been in the Sweet 16 last year. Uh, they both got a chance in the second round, and hopefully now they're on their way f- uh, for a professional career, a long professional career, not a one-contract professional career. So we had on the books to take a foreign tour. So we got those 10 additional practices. And and just as an aside, one of the things, everybody wants to complain about the NCAA, complain about the NCAA. When they allow coaches to start working with their players in the offseason, it has benefited the players. It has clearly benefited chemistry. It has benefited skills. And we have to remember, this is a skilled game. You, you, you You are responsible to dribble, pass, and shoot, and uh, to play the game with a very, very much of a cerebral approach. Mm -hmm. So we had a 10 day practice period. We got on a trip. The basketball wasn't great, but it was still the experience of, here's how you're going to be coached. Here's how you're going to develop your skills. So yes, young is is a descriptive adjective. It is not an excuse. Yeah, And right now we sit at seven of four, mm-hmm. four because we didn't finish the job against Kentucky. We didn't finish the job against Virginia. We didn't finish the job uh, uh, against uh, uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. Mm-hmm. So now getting those same opportunities, we'll get 20 of those opportunities in the Big Ten. We have to finish that job to make sure that we are a postseason team. And then we wipe out that idea that we're so young. We've had opportunities to grow and we will continue to grow because in this program, daily progress is the expectation. I was just going to mention those three games. uh, They were close. You know, it was a four point loss to Carolina, a four point loss to Kentucky and a two point loss to Virginia. So collectively now, what will change in formulating wins in such close outings? One of the things that has to, uh, one of the things that has to improve is our foul shooting. Our foul shooting is not acceptable. That's number one. Number two, our defensive rebounding, we have to get more, we have to spread it out. It can't be Hunter Dickinson and Terrence Williams. We have to spread our defensive rebounding out. And then the other thing that we have to do is we have to take the one-on-one challenge. We're getting beat too many times on just straight line drives, one-on-one drives. Uh, So those three areas to me, foul shooting has to improve our defensive rebounding, which will lead to our transition game and also our one-on-one defensive. What's been the key for defensive success 
as opponents have struggled really more from three uh, than they have two? Well, it's a daily vitamin type of approach. Every day we work on our ball screen defense. We work on our closeouts. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the difference between our wins and our losses, that's where it is. It's the yeah. three-point line. Some of our, uh, at one point, our opponents in our losses were over 54%. At, at the Carolina game, they were 52% in the first half. And in the second half, they made two. And now we can make it a one-possession game. So our closeouts, our closeouts, our closeouts have got to be exact. And then our help defense, which all starts with our communication. We're off a beat communicating, uh, but we have to improve, particularly on the road in the Big Ten. Last thing, Coach. Uh, one of the things I've noticed so far this season is that conference races seem to be close across the country. Do you do you look at this as the same way across the country and in the Big Ten? Absolutely, positively. And when people say, well, what happened? Number one, transfer portal. Some of these teams, and I'm not, it, it, everybody's building programs. Uh, Virginia yeah. is a, a classic program, right? It's, it's a, well, three of the guys that, that played against us were transfers. Illinois, you know, they lost Kofi. They lost their backward seniors. Well, they're in the mix because they added the right pieces and they melded them very early on. And the other thing is that teams are older. Teams are older because of COVID. Who's in their fifth year? Who's in their sixth year? Uh, and certainly across the board, in all of these leagues, I think the other thing to study is the way these teams have non-conference scheduled has prepared them for conference battles. You and I both know forever. You and I have been in a long time. Yeah. Winning on the road, winning on the road is what separates you. And winning on the road in any league, in any league in this country is a challenge. You better be really good mentally. You better be really good physically and you better be really good psychologically because that is the measure of a great team winning on the road coach phil martelli ladies and gentlemen the associate head coach at the university of michigan one of my favorite people to get on the show here and just listen to you know the philosophy of basketball and where it goes in his teams uh where he's he's coaching Coach, I appreciate your time. I wish you and the Wolverines the best this season. I, I appreciate you, and Happy New Year, everybody. Hope the ball happy, goes in the basket. Happy New Year. There you go. <laughs>